And yes, welcome everybody to another edition of the Train Effective Podcast. I'm Hashir, and we have Nick, Nick Humph. Nick again. How are you, Nick? Great. Uh, back in back in Australia for for Christmas and New Year. It's been a couple of years since seeing the family, so um, yeah, got over the jet lag pretty quick, and I'm just ready to ready to hustle, ready to roll. You look really alive today. I love it. And listen, we I want to. I just want to let everybody know today we're talking about a, a really deep topic and I think a topic that has maybe has held you back in the past, but maybe you got over it a uh, topic that a lot of players struggle with right now. I know this for a fact and it is fear that word fear understanding and overcoming fear. I really want to kind of go deep on fear and give everybody listening today a few ways to overcome fear once they understand they're afraid of something and they're afraid of taking a risk or they're afraid of going to that new team blah 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 so just to kind of get started nick i know there's probably a webster dictionary definition but how do you define fear in your own words how do you define fear if you want to do something but you don't do it (laughs) that's um you want to make a pass or a shot, you don't take it. You want to ask out that girl or a guy, you don't do it. You want to go and speak to your coach, but you don't do it. But because... that could also be that could also be laziness, no? Oof, we're really getting deep here. Why would you say laziness? <laughs> I mean, it could be. It could just be, or it could be laziness or excuse. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to, I'll talk to coach after next training session. But why, like, it, the act of actually talking to your coach. Let's use the example of talking to your coach because I don't know. You got dropped and you don't know, you don't know why. It's not that hard to go talk to your coach. If you have training and you want to speak to your coach for a few minutes after training, it's not that hard, right? Mm. Is that? I mean, you're already there training. It's it's way harder to run around with the ball than it is to physically like go talk to your coach. That's a good point. But that's you. A lot of people are afraid. Like some some players, you you might know this, but some players aren't comfortable. It's not that they're not comfortable speaking to their coach because their coach hasn't created that environment. Maybe so. Maybe I'm over analyzing it. But yeah, back to the definition. Yeah. <laughs> yeah i think uh i think there's a lot of factors involved but but if we talk about if we talk about fear it's usually coming out of, out of a place of insecurity like mm. okay, let's say you got jobs you want you could talk to your coach and you'll use laziness as uh yeah i don't i don't really want to talk to my coach today because it's just i don't know difficult conversation to have uh, maybe the coach is right to drop me, so I don't really feel secure with how I play. So maybe that's the right decision. I'm not going to go talk to the coach. And then people will say that's laziness, like, or uh, just you you say it off as like, yeah, I'm just lazy today. I don't want to do it. But really, it's coming out of a place of well, actually, I'm a bit insecure with with however I'm feeling, and that's actually the root of it. No, that's that's a that's that's a pretty elite reframe. Yeah. Um, like that makes a lot of sense, actually. Yeah, I, yeah. I think I think a lot of people use the word lazy just to mask over. Like it's really easy to say, "I'm just lazy today," rather than actually I'm pretty insecure with uh <laughs> with myself or like how I'm playing or um I'm insecure about what other people think of me making this action but i'm just going to disguise it as being lazy uh because it's Mm. easier yeah yeah it's yeah it's it's kind of and it kind of protects you as well and i think a lot of people will use excuses or say stuff like that to maybe just protect themselves or protect their ego and not suffer negative emotions and that because we don't like feeling like that humans um and that kind of that kind of leads me into my (laughs) next point and this, I feel like, was really, 
really maybe resonates with you. That's why I wanted you on again, because I think once you've experienced a wide array of things, you're exposed to more fear. You're exposed, you, like in the past, you surely had situations where you were like, I don't know what's going to happen. Like, or I'm kind of, I, I don't know if I should do this. I'm kind of scared to do this, kind of scared to do that. Um, and you've clearly overcome it because you're here today. Uh, and at least from my understanding, hopefully you're open to talk about these things. So the first kind of thing I wanted to talk about is you didn't, you weren't always in Europe. You grew up in Australia and then I, I forgot what age, but you moved at a rather young age yeah. to, to where, to Hungary, was it? Yeah, Budapest, the capital of Hungary. And Hungary is a, not your stomach, it's a country in Eastern Europe. And that's that's new country. No, you, I'm assuming you didn't have any friends there. Like you didn't really know anybody no. there. New so then the story story basically is like I, I grew up in. I was uh, born in Canberra, Australia. Canberra is the capital city of Australia. Grew up there, um, and then when I was 15, my dad, who was working for the government, got like posted and, and shipped off to Hungary. So I moved there uh, with my family. And yeah, it was the first time I ever went to Europe. Um, and uh, I didn't know anyone. I didn't know a single soul. Yeah, the culture, completely different. Like everything from the food, like Eastern European food, man, it's salty. The people are way different from Australian people. <laughs> like <laughs> Australian culture is like open, friendly. Um, like how are, how, how are you doing, mate? that kind of thing should be right mate yeah so but you know europe or eastern europe especially especially hungary it's a bit more colder people are a bit less open of course when you get to make friends and stuff people are much uh, like they are anywhere like friends anywhere but but uh, it's just, it was a different culture man yeah and shout out shout out garong i don't know i don't know if like you know who garong is but for the real like people that are listening who don't know who garong is guys garong is actually a legend um <laughs> He was an in-residence guest in 2019, in the summer of 2019. And um, kind of a little, I'm just going to tell this story because it's a good story. Um, so my background is Pakistani. Yeah, background. I was born in America, so I'm technically American, but background is Pakistani. Garong is Indian, and he lives in India, or lives in India. He grew up in India, raised in India, came all the way to London for our camp in the summer of 2019, which I was also at. And instantly, I always connect usually with uh, South Asian footballers or footballers from there because, you know, when you think of the top players, top teams, top leagues, you think about Europe, yeah? You think about, like, the top nations globally where, that are producing well. You think about South America as well, Brazil, Argentina, and Europe, even Africa, um, Japan, even Australia. These teams are on the map. Pakistan, India, with these countries that have lots and lots of population, that's just not our sport. So players that like to play from there, oftentimes, a lot of times we shun ourselves even because we're like, oh, like South Asian, like we don't really make it. We don't, no, there's none of us and there's none of us in, in the top leagues. And I really credit Garong because when I met him, I was like, wow, like you came from India all the way here to, for this camp, like if you want to talk about leaving your comfort zone, that's freaking massive. And I remember we had this really deep chat. I um, I don't even know if you know this, Nick, but uh, we were in the train effective house and I was just in his room and we were talking about like self-belief and confidence and his newness with everybody. Like, you know, cause you have so many different people from all over the world in one house and you found it hard to connect by the end of the camp. He, everyone's getting along so well and he was balling out, but in the beginning it was difficult. And, it kind of just, it, it, it relates back to what we're talking about with fear, with like how he probably, he had like subliminal fears there about going all the way to England, meeting loads of new people he's never met in a country where he might have traveled before, but has never stayed. And I really credit that. And I'm like, he probably grew so much from that. So shout out Garong in the chat and the YouTube. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah nick you were you were i, I don't 
I don't remember. Like, the thing is, you've seen so many players from so many different places at our camps. You were at the camp recently as well um, in London not too long ago. And did you have any players that you had like a kind of a kind of a interesting like any really interesting deep stories that you had with or that you things that you found out about any of these players because that is the great thing we have so many people coming from all over um <laughs> you just find out the you found out the most interesting things about people at our camps yeah um i think with uh with Garan. It's uh, and what the story we're talking about with Hungary is like you're basically going to all these, all these. You're getting outside your comfort zone, right? Um, and that's exactly what Garang did. That's exactly what a lot of people that come to the train effective camps do. They're getting outside their comfort zone because they are um, meeting all these people they've never met before. They're going away from home. A lot of them, it's their first time away from home. Uh, first time going to England, so everything's new. But uh, but there's only two ways you can look at it, man. You either look at it as a challenge and a way to grow, or you look at it as something really scary and intense. It's going to, I don't know, It's you're going to die by coming, <laughs> which is obviously not going to happen. So um, you can only, you either look at it as an experience for growth or you don't. And that's if we want to go deep that's what every single person that came to the camp whatever their level was all of them grew man every single one of them grew as a person and grew as a, a, a player because they were put in such an intense environment you're training every single day you're away from home you're eating different food which is good food by the way you're getting coached by these people with weird accents um it's a completely different style, but man, do you grow day after day? Every hour, you're learning something new. You know. Yeah. What? Well, so, I, I want to. I keep thinking this, and I've I've been waiting to ask this. What's the scariest thing that you've ever done, like sport wise, football wise, and how did you overcome that initial fear? Because I have some as well, but I'd like to I like to hear yours first. And if you can't think of think of it, I can. I can tell mine. Um, so, like, f football for me and, and trying to play at the higher levels uh, always came from a, a wanting to not necessarily prove to others, but prove to myself that I could do it because I started football late. I was, you know, most people start when they're four or five six maybe i started when i was eight or nine so i came a little bit late um when i was younger like 11 12 i got dropped to this division two i had this experience where like i was scared to go play with the higher level players because i was insecure when i was that young so when i got older it became this kind of thing of proving to my to myself really that i can compete at the higher levels just to prove it to that younger Nick that was, I guess, scared, insecure about his ability when playing soccer. So um, the scariest thing I did was like actually going to professional uh, tryouts or professional clubs because you'd go there and it's a, it's an elite environment. It's, it's, I remember when I trained with the Australian national team, the youth national team, it was one of my first big, maybe the first big experience I had of the like elite environment. And um, with the Australian national team, there, you go in there, uh, you'd meet the coach, uh, you shake hands with the coach and everything. And, and immediately you're being judged. Like I remember walking into the, with the youth national team on the 17s, I come to the, to the, um, to the training facility, I meet the coach. First thing the coach looks, does, or the assistant coach did, is like looks me up and down. Like, <laughs> how does that body look? And then like, and that's what you do as a coach. You're like, all right, like, what's his body composition? Like, is he skinny? No. Is he fairly strong? Like, how is calf muscles? I, I just remember that, like, seeing that. Like, okay, 
immediately as I walk in the door, first impression, I'm being judged. So that's got to be a good first impression. And then walking out on the field, like, okay, everything's intense. One, two, touch, boom, boom, boom. Um, like all that stuff, it was it was an environment that I was, I was, and you're under pressure. That was an environment that I was scared of the three, four, five years prior. So if we talk about the scariest experience in football, like that was it. It was, it was pushing myself to be that environment that I was scared of. Yeah. Mm, okay, I love that. And uh, you told that really well. I could picture it in my mind, like younger Nick, like just walking out to this training pitch with everything laid out and. Like you said, uh, the training's really intense. Um, I have oh, so many stories today. I have a specific one that when I when I first moved to England and I was in the Trent Effective house, I remember this specifically. And for all, this is for all the U.S. players that um, say, I want to play abroad. I want to play in another country. I want to do this. I want to do that. This is what your situation might go it might go something like this when you say you want to do those things so i was in the house train effective house and i was looking at um teams because we didn't we weren't playing matches so uh, yet and i was looking at a team to like play on at the weekends yeah and maybe train once or twice a night just so i could get that like experience of playing abroad essentially on a team for a club and i I remember I was looking at these teams that were like something in the eighth or ninth division of England. And then there was one that actually replied to me. There were some near me in North London, like really close that just wouldn't reply to my um, emails. And then I got this one WhatsApp phone number. Everybody over there, we use WhatsApp. So I got this one WhatsApp phone number from this club called Barking Side in uh, East London. This was about an hour, 40 minutes <laughs> on the tube. And Nick, this was about as far as you could go. It's essentially, like, it's pretty far. And I got this coach's phone number, and I, I essentially texted him, like, hey, like, I'm from America. Um, I just want to play. I just want to train. Um, long story short, essentially, that, the message sequence. And he's like, yeah, hey, Hash, I'm in Rome. Um, come to training on Tuesday at Seven Kings Park in East London. And I was like, oh, my days. And then the next few days, I never showed this because I was good at hiding. Um, but like I was pretty, pretty scared because I was like, wow, like all those things that I used to prepare for, now I've got an opportunity. So what if I go there? What if I say something wrong to the coach when I say hi because I don't speak like London English? Like, what if the players don't like me? What if I'm too skinny? I was not big at all, you know. I'm in, in England, fast, strong. I get on the bus, yeah, and I took buses this day. It took like two hours, 15 minutes after all of us trained. I went on the bus, went over there. I remember seeing this bald guy because I recognize him from WhatsApp photo. Walked up, and as I'm walking up, I'm really thinking about my first impression, just like you said. I'm like, okay, you, like, you know, kind of standing up straight, you know, like, let me, uh, I don't know. I don't even know what I was doing, but point being, I went up introduce myself everything and this group nick i don't know if all if what your experience is with this what this is but it wasn't just like 10 15 players it was like 30 40 players i don't know if it was them and their sunday league team as well all training together or whatever it was but it was a large group and to be fair there were some really good players there but i was so i was i was uh pooping my pants in essence, but I kept reminding myself, this is where the overcoming fear comes, guys. I kept reminding myself, mate, you are in America, you're in England for this. This is why, like, this is why, you know. And I kept reminding myself all the training, the <laughs> the game brain, the get fit quick workouts, all that stuff from the app, all the training that I had done. It's for this opportunity, it's for your sunny day, as Jay Demerit would say. And I was prepared and I did do well and I was asked to come back and I did get on that team and I did play on the weekends for them. Not the highest level team by any means at all. But for me, it was a it was a big win because yeah. just like we we're saying, overcoming that fear because I easily could have been like, do you know what? Two hours away, leave it like don't do it. But that was the one opportunity I got. And it turned out really well, got a gr like great experience, lots of matches, and improved a lot. That was a big thing, improved a lot. And I think that's 
Nick, I feel like this is a big thing with footballers, yeah? And I, I want to be careful saying this, but, like, you have to have that in you where you're open to going and messing up, if that makes sense. Like, you can't just be like, oh, you know what? This team, I'm not going to go train with them because I'm probably not good enough. Bro, go. Go. Go go to that. Like, go to all these things. Go, 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 go to the open training sessions. Go, like, talk to the coach. Like, even these high-level teams. What's the worst case? You don't get to play on the team. What's the best case? You play on the team. You play really well. You're a starter. You get looked at. You move up. Some other club finds you. I don't know. Like weighing up your like uh like the pros and cons. Like the cons are so we in our heads, yeah. In our heads, Nick, we blow them up so much, yeah. We blow fear up so much. We think I'm gonna go and the coach is gonna see me, he's gonna slap me, and then all the players are gonna laugh at me. Like, no, nobody really cares. Just go apply yourself, put in your best effort. And then we go from there. And that's yeah. a big message I try to get across. What are your thoughts? Well, it's so easy to be stuck in your own head. Like, think about the coach, the bull, the bull coach, seeing 40 players, but you've been on the bus for like two, three hours, maybe the days before you've been thinking about this training session. So you've had hours and hours to think about it. But the coach sees you for five seconds <laughs> and sees glimpses of you like one or two glimpses of you in training and says it makes that judgment like 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 no one cares how you really no one cares really uh how you feel or how you're thinking as much as you do mm -hmm. so i think first you have to be like bro no one cares you know yeah like don't overthink it no one no one cares like what it doesn't really matter how you're feeling or whatever like just just go with it and and second of all um th this is the thing that comes to like oh how's my first impression what if i lose the ball what is the coach thinking it's all comes from insecurity like not being confident with your game not being confident with with yourself maybe as, as a person as a player um and so there's got to be some way to just remove that like you can only focus on what you can control. You can only you can only focus on your work rate. You know, if you're going to a training session, you can only focus on doing the next drill, the next exercise, your first touch, your you know, next play. But you can't control what the coach is thinking. You can't control really what the other players are thinking about you, whether they like you or not. Especially if you go in the elite environments, there's players that definitely don't want you there because you're gonna take their spot or you might. But you can't control that. So I would say focus on what you can control. And the third thing, Hash, I actually want to touch upon this a bit more. <clears throat> because I think this is what leads to a lot of insecurity and a lot of fear and a lot of, oh, I'm training so hard, Hash. I'm training hard. I'm training. Let's do this. I'm training hard. I'm training 50, 15 hours a week for the last year. Like, I'm, I'm ready for this opportunity. Like, I want to be a pro by the age of 18. Or 21, like I want to be a pro. I, I, my, the, my friends know my ambition. I'm going to be a pro in the next 12 months. Like, so I got to, I got to, I got to succeed at this opportunity. I've been training, I've been doing it. And then they come to the, to the trial or the training and they freeze up. They don't want the ball. They lose the ball and they start like getting scared. Um, they just freeze, man. And it all comes from these expectations that you put inside your own head. Like, why do you need to be a pro by the time you're 15 or 18 or 20? Like, like, who are you doing it for? Are you doing it for, why do you need to be a pro at 18? Like, is that because you told your friends you need to be a pro? You're going to be a pro at 18? Is it the like, you know? And I think when once you start, like, putting these expectations of age and the time that you'll do something to yourself, you're trying to rush this process where... You might only started playing a couple of years ago and you're not going to be, you're not going to be that level, that pro level when you're 18, if you started at 15, like you're going to have to probably put in 10, 
or 12 years of work, like Sun, Hong Min, Hyung Min's uh, son's dad, he, we posted a video about this on social media. He's like, it takes 15 to 17 years for a player to become a pro. That's literally what he said. Um, it comes back to the 10,000 hour rule too. So when you start putting these expectations about age and, and when you're going to make it, make it, make it, like it puts you yourself in this pressure bubble and these expectations of yourself, which are actually unnecessary, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so, I think, um, I think, and you, you, you might be aligned with this. If not, let me know. But universally, like what I've seen universally, guys and, and girls, it's like the people that end up doing the best, they they really do like, and we always say this, but I'm, I'm just going to hit it home forever. They really do enjoy the process. They'll enjoy the little wins along the way. Like, and like, I've realized that like, recently in my own like personal life it's like the pro like those little wins in the process like the victories within the process a lot of times are bigger than that big bad massive goal and once you get if you if you can really immerse yourself in that in the journey yeah in the journey if you can immerse yourself in that and really enjoy that and if you do enjoy that then one like it, you make things easier for yourself in a way versus like you said rushing everything I want to be a pro by 20. Why 20? Like uh, 20, you could do by 22, 24. Just, it, it's like, it's just a lack of patience. And I get it though. I do understand it. I get it from a frame when or you're a teenager or you're in that age or late teens, everybody's comparing themselves. You're always in these yeah. social environments where Nick, like everybody, like school, everyone is, you're always, it's almost like people are subconsciously competing with one with one another. Oh, definitely. And that's where they start thinking they need to rush everything. I'm in school right now. I'm in uni. I'm going crazy today. I'm in uni yeah? and college America. And so many people just, they think they need to have absolutely everything figured out by um, their senior year, what they call it, senior year. So that's... Right year four in uni so around 21 22 ish age their whole life figuring out, i'm like no you're only four years into your adult life actually like it's early days we're actually all like still babies early 20s if that's your age and i i don't know i just say don't don't rush things enjoy the process of wh whatever you're doing and you'll ultimately get to where you want to if you do enjoy the process what's the point of What's the point of this this dream, this goal? If you don't even like doing it, if you don't even like the steps, you just want you just want the penultimate thing. You just want the shiny thing at the end, but you're not willing to put in the work, put in the hours, put in the tweaks. That's a big one. Mm -hmm. If you've been training a certain way for a certain amount of time and absolutely getting no results, maybe just maybe taking free kicks all day, every day is not as effective as working on your weaknesses that might include playing quicker, playing faster. Maybe you should take some notes on games, stuff like that. It's just, I preach the self-awareness because I think that's that's the way to go to like improve the quickest. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's what it comes down to. But again, it all comes from insecurity. And we, when we talk about fear, it comes from insecurity. Like these milestones that you want to reach comes from, again, insecurity. Like how comfortable do I feel being me in my own two shoes? Like because I need to prove this to someone else. I need to be a pro. Uh, I need lots of money so I can put on Instagram um that i'm a bowler or you know mm -hmm. but it's just a picture you take for other people and then your your yeah man your self-worth your happiness every, everything is then in it's tied into how, how am i perceived how do i look to others <laughs> and uh, i think that's the road to an unhappy can lead to unhappy existence it's a dangerous game because if instagram goes down for a day you're like <laughs> you're gonna be like my identity your you know? identity your, 
your identity is wrapped in it. And um, by the way, on the flip side, there are a lot of like academy players because we know some, right, Hush, that get released at like 15, 16, 17. They've been playing for Arsenal or Premier League club, MLS academy even. And um, they go back home and they're like, their friend asks them, hey, are you still playing for uh, for Arsenal? It's like, nah, man. And then now they're known as the the failed bowler or the the mm. guy that could have been something. Yeah. But because their whole identity is like their whole existence is how well they do in football. Oh, that's deep, yeah. Well, and and getting going a deeper, people people have killed themselves over that. No, like that's some real talk. Mm-hmm. There's like mental serious mental health uh, like issues because people people's identity is just tied into that success of them as a footballer, even though 99.9% of those academy players will never make a first-team debut. Yeah. And, um, yeah. like, I to be fair, to be honest, to be really honest, I used to be one of those people whose, like, identity was wrapped into my performance. And this is actually, like... This that is a dangerous game, but I'm I want to talk about it so people realize it. Because if you don't like, you might not realize it. Some people might not realize. It. I didn't realize it until later on. I was like, hold up, like if I don't play well, if I don't play to a certain expectation I have, which to an extent I might not even have full control of. Maybe the other team is just amazing and had possession like seventy percent of the game. If if I didn't like play to a certain standard. My day, my week is just altered, yeah? It's just altered. Like, my whole mood, everything would just... Everything would just kind of flip, in essence. Whereas if I played well, man, I'm happy. I am so happy. I'm I'm excited about everything. And it was... And I want to talk about this because it's not healthy, guys. It's not healthy. I need you all to understand. And, Nick, I'm sure you you have words on this as well. Like especially nowadays more so than in the past even footballers are not just footballers anymore like they're not just in this box of being a footballer i was never a professional but at my level whatever i was playing at i even i wasn't even in one of these academies but still i would wrap up my whole identity in football but you have to understand you're not just a footballer you're also maybe maybe you're a brother maybe you're a sister maybe you're a son or a daughter Maybe you're somebody's best friend, somebody's significant other who they, no matter if you play well, no matter if you play bad, they'll still love you. They'll still be your friend. Your mates will still be there for you. It, it, it's not as important. Like, I, I understand that football for a lot of people, very important. Yeah. It, like set, set your goals, achieve them, enjoy the process. I love that. Like do all that, but make sure to not, have your whole identity be just this football player because then you kind of do you kind of do flirt with that line of getting in that dangerous zone where if you're not playing well or if your things aren't going well you see yourself as less and not good one thing on this hash like for some people they can't just help it like their identity is that being that football guy that soccer guy like garang or tyler in the chat here I'm sure in their their cities they're known as like being that footballer guy because like Guran came from India to London, Tyler came from Hawaii um, several times to London. So I'm sure all his friends and family are like, how's soccer, Tyler? Like, how are you progressing and all that stuff? And um, like, so what I'm saying is like, you, sometimes you can't help being perceived as that guy. And when people ask you questions and they're like, yeah, how's it going? How are you doing? And maybe it's, 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 you're not where you want to be yet or whatever. It's just having that um, awareness of yourself, like or the, the expectation that, that like, it really doesn't, does it really matter like where you are right now? Like, does it really matter what they're thinking? Because if someone's just around you because you're that guy and you're like whole they want to be around you because you're that 
success like they see you as success with successful guy or girl and that's why they're around you they want to be cool or let's say they want to be cool like you have to then sometimes ask like what would happen if uh if i broke both my legs and i couldn't play anymore like will they still are they still the type that are going to be down for me my friend as a friend like are they really like a real real one um mm -hmm. So what I'm, what I'm trying to say is a bit of a long-winded answer, but basically your real friends, your real ones, whether you play soccer, whether you start a successful business, whether you work at the supermarket, your real friends are the ones that will always be, always be there for you, no matter what's going on in your life or who, what you're doing. They like you because of you, because you're yourself not of what you do. If someone, if you're just friends with someone because of, because of what they do, mm. that's not going to be a friend that's going to stick around. Serious. It's yeah. Yeah. So, one of our, one of the people that Nick, you, we both used to watch, I think from long time ago, his name was Elliot Hulse. And he always would say mm -hmm. who you are is more important than what you do. And um, that's something that really resonates with me. I mean, even to this day. Um, so insecure, but Nick, I, I, I've heard you talk about insecurity a few times and I understand like that concept a lot, but how, and I guess it's not as like just black and white, but how do you, if, if you do, if you are insecure just about yourself, if you just don't think you're that, you have that much to offer as a person. Yeah. That's a very common insecurity. Can you get over that quickly or is that a process over time? Um, I mean, like uh, what I would say is like, I think everyone, every single person on this planet has something to offer, like something you can teach people, something you can, you can make people laugh. You might be the guy that can make people laugh. You might be the guy that can always teach someone a thing or two about, I don't know, life. Um, you might be, you might not talk at all, but wow, you have, you can draw amazing or like you're a huge um, fan of Naruto and that's your whole life. But there's things in Naruto you can teach another, like there's, everyone has something in them and you just, you just got to understand and believe that like, for anyone right now that's listening right now and you feel insecure that you have nothing to offer in this world, wipe that thought out of your mind because you do, you 100%, 110% do. I wish if you're that insecure person, I wish I could talk to you right now and just like learn about you or learn like something that's happening in your life because like for me, I personally, it's always something uh, to love about someone else. Mm. Always. Like, there's always something to love about someone else. Even about Donald Trump and Joe Biden, and what you like. There's always something to love about them, no matter what your political preference, whatever. Like, if you're, if you're the worst bully in the world, like, you suck. You, or a lot of people think you suck as a person. I'm sure there's still something to love about you. Like, man, anyway, there's just, just believe, just, there's something in you. There's something in you that, and yeah. and the other thing is like I don't know like like you've like I know again this goes back to that like this epic um that this video that you had with the I forgot his name maybe his name was Toby in that like corner convenience shop thing in London but it just kind of reminds me Eric 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 yeah Eric Eric maybe yeah and um it's that I don't know if you've noticed this in people every person I've ever met seems to just like have a specific thing or a specific concept or a specific topic of information that they know a lot about. And I think that's like the most fascinating thing ever. Yeah. Cause like I've literally met people that are like experts on like, I don't know, like gift wrapping, like, and they're so passionate about gift wrapping. I've, mm -hmm. I've met people that are just so passionate and into cooking cooking mm -hmm. culinary art just love cooking 
Um, I remember one of your friends, Nick. Um, he was I forgot I forgot his name, but I think you made a YouTube video with him who didn't want to release his music. So yeah. passionate about the music, and I'm looking from afar. Literally, this is the crazy part. I was watching. I was like, man, I wish I got to meet this guy because that's so cool that he's so into this. I would love to like listen to this music and just like jam to this music with him yeah. but then i forgot like i think he wasn't like super confident in releasing his music or whatever something like that and i was like man like people out here like bro like they like everyone like you said i'm beating this dead horse mm -hmm. maybe but mm -hmm. there's so many people have so much to offer that, and, and coming back to this like if you're that soccer player guy or girl and you think you have nothing to offer you're not very special or anything but you're actually going to the field every day like you're you're trying to improve yourself for me that is as interesting or even more interesting that someone that is quote unquote made it like you're the one in that process in the ground like i'd love to know like why you're doing that or, or like why you're trying to improve like what it is you're trying to trying to do because that journey in itself like we want to i want to know about that like i want to support you on that like everyone in this world is like trying to get somewhere they're trying to do something they have a dream they have a goal so you might think you're not special but the fact that you're actually yeah going on that field training every day that's the specialness in itself like you have a story there that you're you have a journey there that you're you're trying to get somewhere you know that's amazing that is that i love that and i, I i'm curious what's like what's the number one kind of i don't know what's the number one message one message that you think needs to be said to young players more who are trying to become professional footballers one message uh that maybe you you've thought of in the past that's in your head but you you wish you could you wish you could send out a notification to every phone on this planet with this message what will that be? Okay. <laughs> I love the notification. By the way, on the Train Effective app, we have these notifications that that uh, we send out every week. They're like su success quotes. So the, the one that just came to mind, Hash, was uh, dreams don't work unless you do. Mm. But uh, I think that's a, that's a quote for another podcast. I think for this one where we, we've been talking about a lot of stuff, just being at the train effective camps uh in november in london having talked to so many players there um i think there's a big thing right now of just uh, just the expectation that people have on themselves which are created out of thin air mm, okay this is interesting yeah it's just it comes back to the whole thing i need to be a pro by 18. like i've come here to get scouted um which is great goals to have but this is the thing hash like if you go to a camp with the mindset of okay I, i'm how am i gonna get scouted how am i gonna get scouted what is the coach thinking of me versus i've come to this camp to give my very best every single day to wake up on time to go to to learn and absorb as much as i can from the coaches and learn every single day as much as i can over I'm waking up today. How am I going to get scouted? How am I going to get scouted? It's a complete, you're going to, the first guy who's about learning is going to, is going to grow way more than the person who has just this preset expectation in mind mm. of why they're there. Like, like, yeah. And I, I think that's beneficial, like long-term as well. Like if you put in, I don't know how, like, however long the camp is 14 28 days of that mindset of what can i learn what can i learn and what can i what can i learn and maybe you're even looking at your own performance like from the day and you're like okay this didn't go well let me like let me focus on this tomorrow that consistency for that two weeks or one month however long it is is so much better for you in the long run than having that thought of how can i get scouted it is listen that is like obviously people and players want that to happen and that's good it's a good thing like that's a good thing like i love that but i think your focus 
if you shift your focus towards what can I learn? How can I, how can I improve? What can I learn, man? That's the big one. The experience that the, this is my thing. It's like, um, I've seen the clips on the, on the, uh, on the train effective Instagram. I believe it was about when Harry's telling, like, he just stops the session and he's like, everybody stop. And he's like talking about specifically mm passing yeah and this i'm about to go deep on this really quick he spoke about how the passes were too soft i remember when i came to england for the first time i trained with you corby mo everybody i thought my passes were fine those 20 years of life until then they were not fine they were i can't say that word they were not they were way <laughs> too soft. they were way too soft and so then i see obviously harry say that and you know where else i saw that exact thing it was the Tottenham All or Nothing documentary where Jose Mourinho, he's in a team meeting. And guys, I want I want to talk about this because like we need to focus on details, yeah. Jose Mourinho in that room with all the Tottenham players, yeah. All these players that have made it, nice cars, all like playing whatever like that lifestyle is that so many people aspire to and wanted at age 20. All those players are Jose Mourinho. He calls out Delhi Ali, yeah? He tells him, because it's a video of the training session, essentially, from the drone. And it shows Delhi Ali, Nick gets the ball in midfield and passes it to the wing. But it's a little slow. And because of that, the fullback closes him down really quick. And you get, get the cross. In. And Jose Mourinho is like, that's a, that's a freaking lazy pass. He uses mm -hmm. curse words. But he's like, that's a lazy pass. Mm -hmm. Like, that, if that's in there... Boom, bang, we're in. We can get an opportunity to score. And I saw that, and I was so intrigued. Um, not because it's Tottenham, Arsenal fan, but not because it's Tottenham, but because even at that level, they are demanding these details, these small things. At the camp, they demand these details, these small things. And when I made that connection between the two, I was like, okay, this, like, this is it. I love this. That's why out of all the things, all the pieces of content and everything, that's mm. always been my favorite with the Harry stopping it because I was like, you're you're implementing these essentially professional top habits for young players at a young age and making a point that this has to be a consistent thing. No soft passes. No, none of these soft, oh, just doing an exercise. No. It's a fundamental that you have to implement. And I can speak on this, guys, because I've been there messing up and I had to correct it, if mm. that makes sense. When I came back from England to America, my passes were much better. I would pass really hard, really fast, and it was actually good. Not too hard, but a good weight. So that distinction was really important to me. And I'm sure you've seen you've seen similar when you've went on trials and stuff. You see, like, oh, man, like, these Wimbledon Wimbledon guys like they're they're passing so quickly and that and the tempo is so high. Yeah. Yeah. It's just yeah, a hundred percent. And like 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 if you're just in that expectation, I'm gonna get scared. Like and, and then Harry does that uh stops the training drill and says um um you need to do faster or better passing like this boom boom boom. Then you, if you're in that growth learning mindset you're just focused on the next path, the next path, rather than not focusing on the past. You're thinking, oh, no, what does the coach think of me now? And then, oh, is the coach looking at the way I'm passing right now? Oh, I'm not going to get scouted now. Like, it's a, it's, a, it's a different mindset, man. Yeah. Like, exactly. these, these people that only ask, how, uh, will I get scouted? How do I get scouted? Like, man. For 99.9% .9 of them, it just doesn't work out work out well, like, unless you change your mindset. Mm. Yeah. The mindset, that's a, that's a big one. I always preach. I always preach mindset because I think that same player, and this is where I really want to, I want to make this, like, uh, clear. That same player, possibly, with that mind, with the two different mindsets can get you two different outcomes. And results and we've seen that i'm only saying that because we've seen that so having that positive good mindset growth mindset committed like committed to growth mindset is extremely healthy because you know what happens then if you do get scouted 
and you do get onto a, into a club or whatever, you're not going to stop there. You're still going to have that growth mindset and you're going to keep improving. Yeah. Uh, like, oh, man, this is our biggest struggle with the, the camps because it's like the number one question, like, will I get scouted? Like, probably 1% to 2% of players will get scouted from the camps because you have to be, like, exceptional. You have to uh, – I'll tell you about the November camp, right? Like, we had – um, so we had 40 players and we had some very good players. Like, 5 to 10 were very, very good. No two ways about it. Like, extremely good. But – was there one or two players that like stood out head and shoulders above the rest that if you saw them in a game, if you asked every person on the team, like who's that number one, it, like that's the guy, there wasn't that. However, and you know this hash, uh, back in 20, the 2018, uh, we're doing a train effective camp uh, um, with performance, our, our scouting partner, and we had Nesta Guinness Walker from Nesta Guinness Walker was playing uh, in non-league. Um, he was at, at this uh, camps where our, our player uh, showcase where our players were as well, train effective players um, who, who played alongside Nesta in those games as well. Um, but, but, but Hash, you saw that, that right, like uh, that, right with, with Nesta, like he was head and shoulders above the rest. Like he was hmm. the guy on everybody's lips, like Nesta, he was the best. Yeah. And um, yeah. I'll give another uh, quick example. And, by the way, just so everyone knows, now Nesta is playing for AFC Wimbledon. He's mm. starting most games. Like, he's become a regular for AFC Wimbledon. Um, so, yeah, there you go. But, yeah, go on, Hash. Love that. So, like, the, and, and that's that's just essentially a success story. Like, it can't happen. Like, it, it can happen. It does happen. But uh, I think another example, Nick, about the head and shoulders thing. Um, not the shampoo, the head and shoulders thing in 2019 summer was we had we had somebody at one of our camps as well, and I think Nick, you saw it, you saw it as well, where um this guy and like he, I believe he was from France, and he was just so much better than everybody else, mm. and we had good players at that camp. We had um Ralph at that camp who. Play, went on to play professionally at, I, I, I believe, Cyprus. Um, similar to uh, Sam from a few weeks ago. But this guy, <laughs> and I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but he was so head and shoulders. Uh, Kevin, sorry, Kevin. Kevin was his name. Kevin, he was from France, a uh, big center back. He was so head and shoulders better than everybody else. But it's not that, Nick, it's not that he was... Um, he wasn't super technical. He wasn't doing like rainbow flicks or anything like that. He did the fundamentals from his position. He was a center back. He did the things he needed to do really well. He won his aerial duels. He would he would defend on the front foot, which was a big, big thing that I remember people said they liked because like just being able to read the game is such a big thing. And he ended up, uh, I believe, I think he's in Germany right now playing and he was a, a similar thing where like he was that head and shoulders better but i don't want to i don't want to deter people by saying like oh you have to be neymar like if you're really good at those fundamentals i would always say it's similar to what tony robbins says it's similar to what all coaches top sports coaches around the world always say stick to the fundamentals tom brady go yeah, nfl here nick like tom brady is like amazing, right? yeah, yeah. The, the man and one of his best quotes he says always just trying to get a little bit better each day yeah mm -hmm. not trying to build rome in a day rome in a day but rome was built every day every day rome was worked upon mm. guys everyone listening if you don't know who tom brady is please go to youtube or go to i think we even have a video in the app about tom brady just search Tom Brady, like, watch a documentary about him, you will be inspired. You need to know who Tom Brady is. Like, 44 now. 44, and he's still winning Super Bowls. And he could have, and if he's saying stuff like that, man, you need to listen. But, um, yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, 100%. All these stories about 
top players, man, getting scouted. And just one more is that the we had a Thai, we had a, a Thai national team player under nineteen, I think, come to one of our training collective camps. And within the first day, like you know, like this is one of the this is a top top player. Just and maybe you need experience to see this. Maybe you need to have a coach's eye to see this. But you can see the way a player moves, the way a player affects the game. Like you can see in their movement, their ability. Like you just know these things. That, that okay, wow, this play is good. And uh, I think I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but um, a performance uh, our, our scouting partner at the camp um, I think got him in, into a League One club on trial. Hmm. But, um, so for people that don't know that's the third division it's a professional division yeah. so yeah. it's a it's a level that a lot of people um aspire to and again guys commit to mastery um commit, commit to mastery and this is the promise about getting scouted right like like if you're good enough you get you'll get it you'll get you'll get scouted if as long as you keep putting yourself out there it'll, it'll happen but you gotta know within yourself and your gut and your your existence that, like, you can feel it when your head and shoulders above everyone else in the in the team you're playing. When you go and play, if you went right now and played with the I don't know under twelves of uh, some local team, like you know, you feel. Of course, you feel you're way better than everyone else, right? And you need to have the same feeling when you come to the training collective camp or go to another scouting showcase. Like you feel it, you really feel it. Mm. Um, but for the majority of people, they're not going to feel it just yet. It takes years. It takes years of putting yourself out there, grinding, 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 and then eventually you feel it. You'll you'll get placed in a certain environment, and now, like you'll just feel it. But yeah, what would you it, say? Yeah. What would you What would you say to the the players? And the, I mean, this will pertain to our camp because we have a one coming up in a couple weeks, actually. Yeah. Um, what would you say as just a message to them, but a message to any player in the near future who's going into a brand new environment and they do want to make an impression? I know we, I know we spoke about um, what can I learn, but after saying that, Nick, like. I feel like that will spur a thought in most people, uh, in many people's minds where it's like, I do like, Hey, like what? I want to be that guy. I want to be that guy as soon as I can. Mm. Um, the first thing I'd say is just, just again, just focus on that mindset of just learning and growing. And what can I learn from this every single day? Like if you, if you, if you do that, you focus on what you can control like the rewards will come whether or not you will get scouted is a completely different question like you really have to be the best of the best like if there's the best five players at the the camp you have to be like number one and you have to be the name on everyone's lips like and it, it'll it'll happen because we work with the right people we want everyone to succeed of course we want players to get to the highest level they can so of course we we spend a lot of time like working with the right uh, partners and right people to make sure that like opportunities are granted, but you also got to be realistic, like, and just know that this is a process to you and you've got to be like head and shoulders above. Yeah. But focus on what you can control first, which is and I learning. Would, I would, you, you, you guessed, listen, you do this sometimes. You do this sometimes where you, you, you guess what I'm going to say. And I was going to say that uh, learning um that's one thing i would say that's one thing i that's actually a minimum i would i would want like everybody to do that like every because i know nick you did this every trial every every trial that you went to i'm pretty sure or most opportunities you would always get feedback oh, gosh i have to tell that story then like this is no, exactly the way i approached it this is exactly the way i approached it for everyone listening so um when i had my first trial with uh, the AFC Wimbledon, I and I just did this for all the first trials I, I, I went to. I had no expectations whatsoever. Like I came in purely just to learn and purely to see how I do at that level. And I make sure I talk to the coach as much as possible. And 
just be aware, have that self-awareness to know my strengths and weaknesses. Like, that's what I wanted to go to AFC Wimbledon for. When I went with the national team with Australia, no expectations whatsoever. I was like, oh my God, I just want to love and enjoy this environment and soak up everything I can learn from it and get better and get better and get better and get better and better. And and that's the mindset I came in with. And bro, did I learn so much. I uh, What I do, AFC Wimbledon, I was there for a couple of days on, on, on trial, three, I think three training sessions. And every single training session on the bus ride home, I'd write down my strengths and my weaknesses, like how I felt. So, by, And then at the end of the trial, I'd, I'd sit down with the coach. He told me what he thought. I'd write this stuff all down. I'm like, all right. He said, I'm not good with my uh, my first touch or my speed. I can't, I'm going to need to work on those things so I can play that level one day. Like, That's the only way I treated it. If you do that, man, far out. Like, You will learn so much. Especially from a young much. age. You're never, you're never too young, guys, to to start doing that and to learn and you don't even this is the crazy thing you don't even have to go to afc wimbledon to do that yeah even yeah. from now like you think that like you just need to go to team training on what day on wednesday or tuesdays and thursdays at 7 p.m at the complex with the light under the lights and see the lads and train and go home you don't just have to do that are your coaches they're always there there are they are a resource they want you to improve. The best thing for them is probably that you enjoy your time, you develop as a player, and you develop as a person. And if you come to them, mm -hmm. like if you come to them and like, coach, this is a big one. This is a big one. I'm not playing right now. I'm on the bench. What can I improve? What do I need to get better at? It's a direct route to improvement, and it's an accurate. Um, it's an accurate. It's accurate information you're getting because your coach sees you play on Tuesday. Thursday, the weekend, all the time. And he'll have an even more honest, even a more honest feedback for you than somebody that might have seen you once or your friend that saw you on the weekend and you yeah. hear his opinion and then you're like all down. So like right. you guys can yeah. do this right away. Go ahead, Nick. You, you guys you guys can in any situation you're in, like any game that you're playing, any training, any freaking playing a casual match with your friends. Right now in Switzerland, where I, where I play, it's off-season. Um, so the other day before I flew to Australia, uh, I was playing four, four versus four, five versus five with uh, with some local players, play at a lower level, kind of like Sunday League, whatever. Um, but we're playing five-a-side. And my goal in playing in those games is, uh, we're playing five-a-side, is to win, to win those games. And to always like try things, evaluate myself. I evaluate myself situations. Like, let's say um, in those first side games, we have small goals, and I keep. I notice that with my first touch uh, or one touch finishing, it's like not accurate in the goal. Um, then I know something I got to work on is my one touch finishing. Like there's always something you can learn, something you can improve, something you can do. In any situation you're in, something you can always learn. And even to this day, like I'm writing, I'm still writing that stuff down. I'm like, okay, my one touch finishing wasn't good in that Sunday league uh, five aside. So tomorrow, in, in uh, my individual training, what am I going to do? I'm going to work on one touch finishing. I'm going to work on my finishing. I'm going to work on my one, uh, my first touch. Like, and then by the next weekend, when I go again, play with those guys, okay. Instead of scoring five goals today, I scored ten with that one touch finish. Like, and that—that's the process of loving every single day. Having waking up, or going to a training, and knowing what am I working on today that's going to help me grow. That's the fun part, man. Far yeah. out, like it's so fun. Yeah, so fun. And it—it's it, like I like it. It—it's like a it's like a boiled down version of a science uh, of a science in essence. Yeah. Like there is like there is a whole like science here that like the process essentially that we keep saying to improving. And you guys immerse yourself in what Nick just said and that's how, you know, when we hear when I hear uh, I'm stuck, lacking motivation, bro, I guarantee you if you're seeing progress every day, every week, whatever it is, it progress that you can measure or like actually see, not progress as in did that coach recruit me if you see progress 
I'm pretty sure you won't be lacking motivation because progress does make us happy. Yeah, progress, getting these small wins. Can I hit that target 20 times next week? Right now, I can only hit it 15 times out of 30 attempts. Can I hit it 20 yeah. times next week? Stuff like that. That would always make me happy because mm. I would love to see my hard work paying off. That makes sense. I loved seeing everything pay off, and I would love seeing that trajectory. And it's not always going to be like that. It's going to be, we know that, but just getting that progress that's a good way to, you know, a good way. It's a good habit to have. Yep. Fantastic stuff. Okay, Nick, uh, we are wrapping up, and I want to end with um, just a question that I have asked you before, but I'm going to ask it again. Just tell me. Two things today you are grateful for in your life? Uh, family, because I'm in Australia now, haven't seen my family in a while, so uh, so grateful. Family. And um, health. Health. Family and health, man. Like the ability to wake up every day, not feeling, I don't know, not being sick or anything and just walking outside and like enjoying life, man. Training, train effective. Boom. Love that. I just love it. Fabulous. Well done, Nick. Um, great having you on again, man. God, it's so fun speaking to you. And I love that chat. And it, it does not feel like it's been one hour, six minutes. So, um <laughs> And everybody, for the Spotify listeners, you can follow us, me, Nick, Train Effective, if you want, in the description below. We'll leave that yep. link in there. Uh, YouTube, you guys, just click on the link below. Make sure to leave us a like. Subscribe for more podcasts. We're going to have more podcasts for sure yeah. and more people. And if there are anybody that you would suggest that we bring on the podcast, mm. let us know. That is why the comments are there. Um, and any topics you all would like to hear from us as deep or as broad as they are, just let us know in the comments below. Um, if you want to DM us the topics as well, because you don't feel comfortable commenting either or whatever, do whatever you need to do. And um, we'll get back to you on that. So with that being said, Nick, I think we need to do a little stay effective. We haven't done that in a while. Yes. Okay. I'll let you count it down today. <laughs> all right. Three, two, one. Stay, Stay effective. effective. Yes. <laughs>